If you've spent enough time in the boating world, you've probably heard the saying that says there's no such thing as a perfect boat. Though that may be true, Pathfinder builds one that's pretty close to it. Back in 2022, this boat disturbed the boat market as the perfect do-it-all boat, putting it in a class of its own. Hey guys, welcome to our channel here, Life by the Bow. If you're a longtime viewer, you guys probably know that we have a really good relationship with Pathfinder boats. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that I've always been a fan of Pathfinders ever since they first came around, just because these boats are capable of so much. Right here behind me is our Pathfinder 24 Open. And I actually saw renderings of this boat before it ever even came to life. And I thought to myself, as soon as it became available, I had to have one just because this boat checks off so many boxes. And we've been just about everywhere from Chub Key over into the Bahamas, the Dry Tortugas, and of course we've ran it here all throughout the Florida Keys. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna give you a real world review based on this boat from a real boat owner that's really put this thing through its paces. We're gonna talk about trailering, we're gonna talk about the height of the tower, we're gonna go over performance numbers, and of course, a complete walkthrough. And I think we're finally ready to give you guys a complete review based on what this boat is all about. So one of the best parts about this boat is you get so much in a small package here. You know, when you look at this boat up on the trailer, you think to yourself, wow, like this looks like a center console. But at the end of the day, this is still a bay boat. As you can see down here, we have a 15 degree dead rise. So this boat drafts about 14 inches. So it's still very inshore capable. And ultimately, that's really what this boat is intended to do. It's an inshore fishing boat. But at the same exact time, the layout that we have going on inside makes it very offshore capable for those calm days. And personally, I'm a calm weather fisherman and I love offshore fishing. But at the same time, I like doing some inshore fishing from time to time. And the best part is we do a lot of live bait fishing down here in the Florida Keys. And typically we have to get pretty shallow in order to catch bait. So a lot of the times we're in places where the big center consoles can't go, but we're just as offshore capable as them on a calm day offshore. So with the 15 degree dead rise that we have going on here in the back, of course, we have the Yamaha. 300 back here. One of my favorite things about this Yamaha is the electronic power steering that we have integrated here on the engine. One of the best parts is we have extremely smooth steering on this boat. You can steer it with a finger if you really wanted to. We have that mounted on an Atlas jack plate, has the eight foot power pull blades. These work perfect for me. The 10 footers would be great to have an extra two feet, but I think that these just keep everything very clean and uniform, as you can see, they don't really go too much higher than the engine right there. So whenever we're fighting a fish around the back of the boat, this eight foot blade is absolutely perfect. Got some underwater lights right here, just to add a little bit of accent to the boat early morning or late at night, those always look cool. And of course we have the trim tabs right here as well, which are really important whenever we wanna get that bow down or level out the boat. But as you can see right here, we have a nine foot beam. So there is plenty of room inside of this boat. Once you get inside, you don't feel like it's a 24 foot boat, which I love, especially since I have a little girl on the way. Um, this is gonna be a great family boat for us when the time comes. This is something that you still don't think is big enough for you. Pathfinder also makes this exact model, but in a 27 foot model. So that's what's nice. Pathfinder has ranges from 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27. So as you can see, we have the boat sitting on an Ameritrail trailer. One thing I'd like to mention is I've towed this boat basically all throughout the state of Florida, and I've never had a clearance issue with this tower. So Pathfinder keeps in mind those DOT requirements when it comes to trailering this boat down the road. So in most cases, you'll never have a problem with that tower, which I absolutely love, but we'll get into that later. Like I mentioned, sitting on an Ameritrail, and it's what we've chosen every single time. I do a lot of things myself, and especially with the baby girl coming, um, the wife is gonna be occupied with her, so I'm gonna be on my own more now than ever. 
So having a nice trailer like this Ameritrail is really important to me. Um, they use all top quality components, so I'll get a longer life out of this trailer. And ultimately, if your trailer's not working properly, you're not getting your boat to the water. If you can't get your boat to the water, you're not going out on the boat that day. So this is something that you definitely don't want to overlook. But one thing that I love about Ameritrail more than anything, they take a perfect measurement based on the bottom of your boat and they weld the bunks in a fashion to where it fits the bottom of the boat perfectly. So whenever you get done at the end of the day and you run the boat up onto the trailer, it's gonna fit perfectly on that trailer every single time. So you don't have to worry about it being lopsided. You pull it up, go back to the house, wash off the boat, enjoy time with family, enjoy your kids. And that's something that I just love doing is simplifying my life as much as possible, which is a big reason why I love taking out this boat. Of course, we got the brakes, we got the nice aluminum wheels, we got the trailer guide posts, and then something I love is these straps right here. As you can see, they're retractable. When we get done at the day, we just hook them on, get a couple cranks on it just like that, and we don't have to fumble around with any straps. Most importantly, we never have to worry about a ticket. No excuses, right? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put this thing in the water, show you how easy it is with this specific setup, show you guys some performance numbers and give you guys a walkthrough and really show you what this boat is all about. Pretty obvious here, but we're just gonna unhook. But I think what I wanna highlight here more than anything is just how easy it is getting this boat off this trailer. A lot of that has to do with the design of the trailer, number one. Number two, I put silicone spray on the bunks. Not too much though, because you don't want the boat to just go flying off the trailer, but just enough to make it slide real nice and easy, just like that. We're just gonna crank her up. And it doesn't get any more simple than that. So first things first, if you ever hop inside of this boat and you do a sea trial, you're gonna notice how beamy it feels. And like I mentioned earlier, the steering is like butter with the electronic power steering. So you can see with just my thumb and my index finger, I'm ever so slightly putting effort into steering this boat. Another nice feature that Pathfinder added onto this boat, you're doing everything yourself, just pop the boat on autopilot. Obviously, everybody's still paying attention. The boat's gonna steer perfectly straight for me. So now what we're gonna do is very slowly, we're just gonna climb this boat up on plane. But as you can see, very effortlessly, this boat will get up on plane. So right now we're turning 3,300 RPMs and we're getting 3.8, 3.9 miles per gallon. The boat holds 88 gallons. We have about 30 in there right now. Our fuel flow, 7.8 gallons per hour. So definitely a very economical boat. And like I mentioned, we're still in a 24 foot bay boat. So we can run this boat in some pretty shallow areas. And in my opinion, once you get up in the tower and you start maneuvering into a bunch of little cuts around some beaches, this boat can be a lot of fun. So now what we're gonna do is very safely, we're gonna climb up to our top speed Trim it out, put our jack plate all the way up. That's how this boat likes to run wide open. All right, now we are wide open and we're climbing. We're actually on the rev limiter right now. We're doing about 55 miles an hour, 6,100 RPMs. So in a case like this, we would actually need to adjust the pitch on the prop get this boat to go a little faster. So I figured no better place to start this walkthrough rather than up here in the tower. And as you can see, it's very easy to get up inside of here and there is plenty of room. So as you can see, I'm all the way over on the starboard side of this tower and I still have enough room for another person right here as I slide over. Just goes to show you how big this tower actually is. We have cup holders on both sides. You can never have enough cup holders on a boat. 
We also got two rod holders right here in the back. And then we have two rod holders facing forward for a pitch rod. it has been a lot of situations that I've been in when we're cruising around, we're looking for mahi, pick up the pitch rod real quick, make a cast. Next thing you know, you're hooked up on a mahi up in the tower, which is no better feeling in the world. We have a single Garmin GPS chart plotter right here. We can control the stereo. Um, obviously we have our chart sonar, just about everything that we would have down there on the first station, we have control of up on the second station through network cables that run through this uh, tower here. Also have our Yamaha gauge right here, steering wheel, obviously. Got our jack plate control. We have our autopilot controls, power pole control. We can start and stop the boat from here. We also have the trim tab control with indicators and obviously our throttle. So here we are up on the forward casting deck and this is where you'll find the true pathfinder roots making this an inshore bay boat. And this is even great for offshore fishing as well. The same exact way we were talking about elevation up in the tower, we have that elevation up here in the front, which is really important whenever we want to get a little higher to sight fish. Now, Pathfinder went ahead and molded a nice little toe kick here. So you know when you're getting close to the edge, we have the all new Garmin Force trolling motor. And I've been getting a lot of questions about this trolling motor here and I absolutely love it. It's ridiculously fast. It'll pull this boat to up to five miles an hour, which is fast for a trolling motor. Um, another thing that I really like about this trolling motor is we have live scope mounted right here on the front of the trolling motor with no crazy extra add-ons. It just bolts right onto the trolling motor here. And then what's nice is we can actually run that live scope cable through the shaft of the trolling motor so everything stays very nice and clean here. There's so many other features that is built into this trolling motor that really gives you the ability to do some cool things whenever you couple the Garmin trolling motor with the Garmin chart plotters. But for the sake of the walkthrough, we're gonna keep on moving down the line here. We have a nice large anchor locker here, which is big enough for plenty of road, chain, and anchor. It's also where we're running our live scope cable. It's on a slam latch. Got pop-up cleats right here. Pop-up cleats are very important, especially when we're throwing the cast net. There's nothing for our net to get caught on. Also nothing for fly line to get caught on. Moving back a little bit, we have a nice large storage hatch up here, which is great. That's one thing that Pathfinder is known for is just tremendous amounts of storage. We actually have um, component lights inside of here that actually light up the inside of the hatches, which is very useful on those very early mornings. Everything's on gas shocks, Gemlux hardware, so everything is top tier, top quality. Another thing to note about hatches on Pathfinder is we have a nice gasket here, so when you close them, they close very nice and easy, and they don't make a loud slamming noise which just makes you feel like the boat is made with quality. Another thing to mention, we have extremely deep gutters on these hatches, which is important because that's what channels the water off of the deck inside of these gutters. And ultimately that's going to keep your hatches as dry as possible. As you can see, we have a nice transition. So when you're coming from bow back into the cockpit, it just makes things really nice and easy, especially for those of us that don't get around as quick. We have a nice large hatch right here, which is also an insulated fish box with a drain that goes overboard. So this is nice not only for fish, but say for example, you're bringing the family to the sandbar, this cooler's not enough right here. You can completely load this up with food or drinks. One thing I can say is, is you can put a lot of people on this boat and you definitely have all the storage and all the areas for food and drinks that you could possibly ever need in a boat. So just by having this, making it universal, whether it's food or drinks, fish, it just really makes this a really functional boat in my opinion. We have mirroring JL Audio speakers, 8.8 .8 inch on either side. Something that I actually had to do is I had to take this rod holder. This rod holder was originally over here, moved it forward, 
put a cup holder here just to get the extra clearance for the 8.8 .8 speakers because the rod holder was hitting the back side of the speaker. So I love it. The fact that I can put a rod right here and then also have an area for a drink. Say for example, we're getting in the cooler, we pull it out, put a drink right here. So that makes things really nice. Another thing I enjoy about this step up hatch right here is if you really wanted to, you could put a cushion right here and it just adds more seating to the boat. Um, we're very minimal typically whenever we're taking people out on the boat, we're typically always meeting up with friends. So we just have this all set up for fishing. Right down here, we have another hatch, which is big enough to store cast nets. I keep all my PFDs in there just because things that I have to get to often, I try to keep those in elevated hatches in the boat just to uh, minimize on wear and tear on the body, having to get up and down every day. So now that we're inside the cockpit of this boat, you guys can see how big this boat actually feels. Now remember, we're in a 24 foot boat right now. We have a nine foot beam and we have the ability to walk across this entire platform with absolutely no obstruction. And that's where this boat gets its open name from. And we'll see a lot more of that as we move towards the rear of the boat. But just going back to the fact that this boat is nine feet wide, as you can see, we could get two people on this cooler very easy. We just have so much walkable room. And say, for example, you're an older guy and you have some trouble getting around and you don't want a really big boat, this boat definitely does check a lot of those boxes. As you can see, we have some higher gunnels on this bay boat that we're typically not seeing on most bay boats. And personally, this is something that I love about the boat, because like I said, we do a lot of days of offshore fishing on this boat. So it's just really nice to be able to lean up against these bolsters and be locked in. And of course, we have the cushion here, so it just makes things real nice and easy up against your legs or your knees. At the same exact time, they're not extremely high, so we can still reach over the side of this boat, grab a fish, get in and out, we're at the sandbar. So Pathfinder really hit a home run when it came to the design, the gunnel height, and just everything that we have going on right here. As you can see, we have under gunnel rod storage right here. We typically use these for gaffs. As you can see, now we can get a different view based on this tower here. Pathfinder gives you a couple options. You can choose no powder coating, you can do white, black, but what's so cool is you can go onto Pathfinder's website and you can customize your boat exactly the way that you want it done right there on the website so there's no surprises once you actually get the boat in person. So I suggest doing that. But on the front side of the pod, as you can see, we have a spreader light. We also have two 6.5 JL speakers right there. And then I also added these little light bar pods right here, which are nice for early mornings um, whenever we're going out Wahoo trolling or say we're trying to get way back in the back country. Just nice to have some sort of light to have right there in front of you. Beautiful pipe work. We have the canvas on the back side right there. But as we move down, we have a nice windshield. We have our nav lights on either side. And then we have side entry here down inside of the console. So as you can see, we have plenty of room down in here and Pathfinder actually gives you the option to put a head in this boat, which is really unique in my opinion for a 24 foot bay boat. That's something that we have to keep in mind. There's really not a lot of 24 foot bay boats out there that have this much access and usable room inside of the console. So that's something that's really important for my wife, something that could be important for the little girls. Um, but if you're not using it for a head, you can also use this for storage. We've done camping trips in the dry Tortugas in this boat. Like I said, we've been in the Bahamas and it's just nice being able to pack all of our luggage, all of our things inside of this console here. And it just gives you the ability to do so much more out of this boat. Down up inside of there, um, that's where our trolling motor battery is actually housed. The way that we have this boat set up with the trolling motor is we have one single lithium trolling motor battery that's 36 volts. The thing's as light as a feather. It's something that I absolutely love about these uh, lithium batteries that we have now for these trolling motors. And like I said, as you can see, everything's nice and clean in there. We have our live scope, we have our JL amplifier there, and then of course our breakers, but plenty of room. This is something I absolutely love about this boat. So now here we are behind the console. 
which is cool because now you guys can see another angle based on how wide this boat really is. And of course, how wide the console is. So wide to the point that we can put two 12 inch chart plotters behind this console here, which I think is fantastic for us because like I said, we do a lot of offshore fishing. So as you can see, we're running our chart on one side and then we're running our sonar on the other side. So when you're doing a lot of offshore fishing, this is something that you'll find to be very important. Of course, we have two cup holders right here. You never have enough cup holders on a boat. Like I've always said, we have our compass, switch panel, everything that we had up in the second station, we have here on the first station from our Yamaha gauge, steering wheel, jack plate control, trim tab switches, power pole, throttles, then we have our stereo head unit and of course our autopilot control. And something that's very unique about these newer Yamaha engines is this is actually our key. It's a key fob, just like how we have push to start cars nowadays, now we have push to start boats. So no more keys, this is just the keys to lock up all of our hatches. And this is essentially what the boat is detecting when you hop inside of it and you go to crank up that engine, which is really cool. We have a little storage hatch right here, which is nice. More storage, the better. And then we have storage inside of our leaning post here. This is typically where we're putting all of our leader, our tackle boxes. And another thing that we can do is we can pull out all four of these pins and this entire portion of the leaning post will actually remove. And then we have access to our batteries and our power pull charge. Something that I love about the power pull charge system on this boat is when we're running the engines, the power pull charge system will actually take the charge from the engine, redirect it to the trolling motor battery. So that's something that's really useful whenever we're running the trolling motor all day, using it on spot lock, things of that nature. And another thing that I really like about the charge system from power pull, we can actually monitor the charge on our trolling motor battery and cranking battery so we never end up dead in the water. Now moving around the side of the console here, like I was saying, there's tons of rod storage on this boat here. And we have four vertical rod holders right here, ready to come around the console, grab real quick, make a pitch. But before we move down and back a little ways, I wanna talk about the console size one more time, just to explain another important factor based on having a larger console. You know, whenever you get into some weather, some rain, sloppy seas, you know, two people can tuck back behind this console, no problem, and you can stay out of the elements, which is important. You wanna stay comfortable whenever you're out there on the water. But moving back, we have a 7.7 .7 inch JL speaker right here. This is the biggest one that I could fit. Sounds fantastic, paired up with that 800 watt amp that we have inside of there. We also have more under gunnel rod storage right here. Now, this is something that I absolutely love about this boat. And if you guys like being comfortable like me, this is something that you'll really enjoy. As you can see, we have this convertible leaning post helm chair here. And as you can see, we can bring down both of these armrests whenever we want to be comfortable put the boat on autopilot, go cruising around obviously. And then once we get to our fishing spot, we can just convert this whole thing back to fishing mode, as I call it. So it's just another thing that makes this boat extremely functional. So as we move back, this is what really sold me on this boat. And especially if you're an older gentleman or lady, you know, sometimes it's a little harder for some of us to get around, step up on some of these hatches. So the fact that we have a flat deck back here for the most part, we can get way up against this transom and we can still work a fish over the power poles and over the engine here because we have plenty of room to move back and do what it is that we need to do. But before we start talking about this area too much, I just wanna finish off here on the leaning post. You know, we have five rod holders right back here, which is great, got more rod storage. Obviously up here on the top, we have more rod holders. We have the Kingfish rod holders. This is great for slow trolling ballyhoos or live baits. Got a spreader light right here for when things are a little dark. So it's nice that Pathfinder includes all of these things as standard features. Down back here towards the live well, something that's really significant about these rod holders on the back of this leaning post here is they don't extrude over the live well. The reason why that's important is because whenever you're coming over the side of the boat and you're dropping the cast net here inside the live well, 
these never become an issue. Sometimes you'll see these rod holders over the top of the live wells and it makes dropping the cast net here extremely difficult. But right here, it's a 41 gallon live well and we have two pumps that help the water to recirculate in here. Another thing that's great about that, say for example, one live well pump goes down, you have a second to keep your baits alive, which is really nice. God forbid you ever get in a situation there. We also have three drains, so we can really control our pressurization here on this live well. We also have a light inside of there that pops on whenever we turn on our live well pumps, which is really cool. Got the clear lid up top here, so we can always make sure to monitor our baits. And in my opinion, this is what just really takes this boat up to the next level. And that's the aquarium windows right here. Not only does it give the boat such an elegant look, but it also helps us to monitor our baits, make sure our water levels are always proper. Ultimately, you know, as a live bait fisherman myself, I spend a lot of time looking for bait and it's typically one of the most important parts of the day. So just making sure our bait is in tip top shape and style. I think that this is something that makes this boat really cool. Now, another thing that really sold me on this boat and you do not typically see in a lot of 24 foot bay boats is fish boxes. And not only is this big enough for a wahoo, mahi, big kingfish, but you know, we can also use this as storage for dive gear. Or say, for example, like I said, you're bringing a lot of people to the sandbar, or you just want a place to store more food and drinks, a bunch of chum to go out yellowtailing for the day. You know, this is the spot that you are going to use right here. Another thing is too, when you look at some of these other bay boats, you know, typically you're getting a hatch that's about half the size of this, but the fact that we have this open design here, we have so much more storage inside of the floor here. Now looking back this way, you can get a different view based on what's going on back here. We have our salt water wash down. We also have a fresh water tank on this boat as well. So we have fresh water for whenever we get out of the water at the sandbar. We also have these jump seats, perfect for the kids, wife, family, friends, extremely comfortable. And whenever it's time to go fishing, just lift up, get these right out of the way. And it's like they're not even here. Got rod holders all down the gunnel here, different positions, different degrees. Got our pop-up cleat here as well, perfect. That way we don't get anything caught on the cast net. Got a cup holder, this is perfect for drinks, but just in case we wanna stick some lures in there, maybe some weights. Now, if you guys do a lot of work on your boat yourself, this is something that you're gonna love. The size of this bilge is probably the biggest bilge I've ever seen on a 24 foot bay boat. God forbid you ever need to get down inside of there, there's plenty of room to do so. I've gotten my entire body up inside of there. It's also great for storage. I like to put my cast nets up inside of there. Basically any type of wet storage goes in there. We also have another 27 gallon live well here on the transom. So if the 41 gallons right here wasn't enough for you, we have another live well back here with a bubbler. Um, say for example, you want to separate ballyhoo from pilchards or you want to separate pilchards from shrimp and crabs, you can do that here or you can just smack them full of pilchards and go uh, live chumming, which is typically what we do a lot of the times. Also got two rod holders here on the back. Pathfinder just utilizing the space as far as rod storage here. Um, this is typically where we put our bait net, so we just grab it real quick, scoop them out. And now you can see here, we have a very easy transition right over the transom here. And now we're on the swim platform. And this is another thing that's really significant about this boat. I love to dive. So we do a lot of spear fishing, lobstering. So the fact that we have a swim platform that goes across the entire transom of this boat, this is a really nice feature, not only for diving, but for getting in and out of the boat at the sandbar. Also got a dive ladder right here. In case we uh, got someone that's a little older or we got some kids getting in and out of the boat, especially for the sandbar. That's real nice. It just goes up inside of here, tucks away. Got a nice little grab handle as well. So that's extremely nice. And really us living down here in the Florida Keys, having sailfish five miles out, bonefish, snook and tarpon here near shore. And then of course, spear fishing, diving, lobstering. I mean, this boat really just checks all the boxes. 
And you know, if you got a couple buddy boats and you're feeling up to the challenge, you can bring this boat over to the Bahamas, no problem. Just make sure you always have friends to go with in case something happens. And then most importantly, just being able to mount a trolling motor on the front of this boat. You're out here with the wife and kids, you're doing everything yourself. You're pushing buttons to drop the power poles and anchor the boat. You're dropping the trolling motor, pressing buttons in order to anchor the boat. I mean, from the tower, to the trolling motor, to the power poles, two GPS chart plotters, well three if we count the second station. This thing is set up, in my opinion, it's a boater and fisherman's dream and we've had so much fun in this boat and we hope that you guys have enjoyed watching us in this thing. And you know, if you're in the market for a bay boat and you like to do a little more offshore fishing, you like to dive, but inshore fishing is still something that's at the core. This is definitely a boat that you wanna take a look at. But once again, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us throughout this entire video. Hopefully this solidified your decision on your next bay boat purchase. But until then, see you guys in the next video.